Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new devlog episode 4 in this episode we're gonna be focusing on the visuals of the game by actually making the towers look like towers and having actual models on top of the enemy we're also gonna make our placement system that we made last time in a grid based system because I think that would fit the game a lot and a lot better. As you can see the first thing I did after the last episode and after my job interview was to uh, place this green grid which is the placeable on every single tile where I want you guys to play. So you cannot place on uh, ramps and of course if there is decoration you also cannot place there. You can place on small hill stuff. I might replace them later for like hill enemies. But I'm not sure if I want hill enemies. So yeah so far this looks really Really cool. I did however forget to uh, you know Put the enemy base and the player base into the map. So uh, Let's also do that right now real quick Okay, so those are placed. Let's actually uh, Make our player stuck to the grid first because I think that's a really really important step on making the game look nicer and feel more balanced so instead of writing this code, I'm gonna make a new vector tree. So let's see, we're gonna comment this one out. I'm gonna do vector tree dot new and we're gonna do mouse dot hit dot p dot x and we're gonna divide that by our grid size. Just so that we can uh, round it down, math.floor. And after it is count down, we should just very, very easily do it times the grid size again. And this should theoretically uh, put it on a grid. Of course, I have to do it for all axes. So for the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis. But this is the basic concept. And I I think this would snap it to the grid. Let's test that out, shall we? Here we go, the moment of truth. Poof! And it is snapping to a grid! But, <laughs> something that we notice... Uh-oh, uh-oh! <laughs> the grid is... Uh, how do you say that it is completely off with the mouse? Do you see that? It's completely off with the mouse. Also, it totally doesn't match up with the map. Okay, and there we go. As we can see, it now actually snaps to the grid. And boop, boop, we cannot place it here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I, I like how it goes, goes down here. Like, huh? What is happening? Uh, so we should fix that little problem. Uh, but other than that... Yeah, let's go, dude. You, you cannot place it on the walls. See, it's perfectly aligned with the grid. I mean, honestly, like, to show you guys how perfect it is, like, let's put it on this corner. Look, it's completely flat. It's completely on the grid. There are some other things that we really want to do. For example, we want to turn around the cube so it can actually, you know, we can rotate it uh, to look the direction that we actually want it to. Uh, so let's actually make so that we can rotate the cube. Okay, so for this one, we're still gonna go with the notion that we're only building this for PC. Of course, we're going to improve the code later to work with Xbox and mobile. But for now, I want it to work on PC. And we're gonna do that using the user input service. So this is the user input service. Normally I would place it on top of the script, but I uh, want to keep everything in frame for you guys. Because if you never done this before, it can be quite, you know, a bit difficult. So we're going to do a little function and uh, this will be uh, clicked a clicked a button and we're going to give it an 
input and a game pro uh, processed. We're gonna give it an input and a game processed. Really, really nice. Now to call this function, we're gonna do user input do input began connect and then we're just gonna type click a button and be sure to remove these uh, the, the thing is behind it. Uh, how do you call them? The brackets! We're called brackets. Okay, so first we're going to do if not game progressed, then. So this means uh, if you are not chatting, because we don't want this to fire when you are typing in the Roblox chat. Then we're going to check are we actually using uh, a keyboard. So input dot user, wait it is input with a capital I, don't forget input dot user uh, input type equals equals enum dot user input type dot keyboard. So this will only work for a keyboard and then we're just gonna see okay uh, if input dot key it's with a capital key code equal equals enum key code dot uh dot r boom there we go then and then we're gonna rotate it and if we test it out we can see that it is rotating but uh, <laughs> not in the way that we want it to okay second time is the charm and go Oh, did he? Yay! Okay, we did it! <laughs> but now, will it actually save? Boop! And boop, boop, boop! Yay! Let's go! Also, you can't place towers on towers, obviously. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now that we actually have the grid placing system out of the way, which probably nobody of you guys is probably gonna use because it's like really something only you can do in this art style uh, let's do something that you guys have been asking me a lot about let's make enemies on top of these blocks i am so so excited to do that so the first thing that we're gonna do before we can animate this and put it on our models is we need to give every single part its own name so for example this thing would be uh would be the shell and this thing uh would be the body and this thing would be the shell line so go to uh, to the entire model like this and make sure that not a single name is the same names cannot be the same so once we've done all of that, we're gonna put in uh, the animation details. So I'm using this plugin, custom character creation, and we're just gonna edit, and we're gonna bind the body, like the underbody, to the claw. So to the claw, then the upper claw to the bottom claw, because we want to have to animate that. And then of course, the body to the leg, the body to the leg. The body to the leg. And of course we have to make sure that all these little points are at the correct spot. So that's just a simple business of moving them around. And boom. This seems like a good spot for the, uh, the knee to bend. So that is what we're gonna be using. And now that we have all finished that. We can simply start to animate them. Really really simple. I also totally forgot that you have to make sure to unanchor your entire project and to make sure that there is like a part as like uh, the main part. This is basically what I mean by that, like every enemy has this little red uh, object inside of him. Um, so yeah, I still need to do that and then we can animate. <laughs> And here we go, all animated. Because he is a little crap, I decided to make him walk sideways. Just like uh, the blue little crap. And yeah, I think he looks really, really cool. Okay, so now I'm not gonna implement all the enemies on video today. 
so since we have a slow and a fast enemy, uh, let's do the snail and the ant. Okay, let's do the snail and the ant this episode. Ooh, I'm excited! Okay, so how it's gonna work is that on the server, you will actually see the cubes moving around. But on the client, we will put the enemy models. So, what does that mean? It means we need to use a local script. So first we're gonna look for the enemy folder, which is in workspace. Wait for child enemies because we put every enemy inside a folder which means we can easily do enemy folder dot child edit connect function so this function will only work when a new enemy is being put in the enemy folder which is really really useful for us in fact we can even do entity here and now every time an enemy spawns, we know which enemy spawns. So the model is going to be found by going into our game.replicated.storage.findfirstchildentitynname. Because we want to make sure that the model that the enemy is using has the exact same name as the block that moves around and you know <laughs> this is basically all there is to it now all we need to do is make the model model dot set primary part c frame to entity dot primary uh, I mean dot enemy dot c frame and now we just have to anchor them together and it already works this is literally all we need to do. Okay, time to test it out and see if we get an error. Error, 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 no error. And it didn't, wait, what? It worked for some of them, but not for all of them. Wait, what? What is happening? Huh? Uh-oh. Wait, why is that one, but this one isn't? Uh oh. Okay, I made a pretty dumb mistake. I'm not gonna, you know, deny that. I I never put the models in the workspace. <laughs> Let, let's actually try it again. This is the first try, guys. This is actually the first try. Don't don't mess with me. This is the first try. And <gasps> it's an ant. Look how fast he is. And it's another ant. Yes. Oh, and it's a snail. Look at the little snail. Oh my god, they're all so fast, dude. Oh, yes. But uh, there are a little bit of problems. Like, they are floating. Which uh, isn't really what we need. So we need to fix the floating. And uh, we need to get rid of the decal uh, in front of it. <laughs> oh, no. Look at all the snails. All floating. Woohoo! <laughs> and that totally, totally fixed it. We might need to do a little bit of work with the ramps. Because the enemies kind of go through the ramp. But other than that, that completely fixed it, dude. Let's go. And they look so fast because they're so small. Now look at this little ant. Nyang. Like look how big the tower is now compared to those little guys. Oh my god. Oh this looks so cool. Look at all the ants. Oh no they're gonna take my food. Don't take my food. Look at all the ants. Nyang, nyang, nyang. Oh I love them. Let's go dude. Pew, 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 pew. Yes. Okay okay okay. Now we just need to make the tower a bit more presentable, shall we? Okay, so we just made very, very big progress. I mean, very, very big. Uh, you can actually, you know, see the tower inside of the block now, uh, which took a little bit of while. It's basically the same as this, uh, but I had to rewrite the code a little bit, but there we go. We can now rotate them around. If we click, uh, we get an error because it's not uh, 
like a system is completely different but so far this uh, this this really works i really really like it i want to do a bit more to clean this up uh, so let me actually clean this up and make this look a lot and a lot nicer. Oh, I'm so excited to see how this will look. So I think I actually make it look pretty nice. So when you spawn a tower, you can see the tower that you're currently spawning with this little uh, area around it. Which basically displays if you can place it or not. So if it's green, you can place it. And obviously if it's red... You can't place it. So yeah. And lastly, since this map is so big, I added sprinting to the game and double jumping. So you can very easily get to the top to place your towers before the evil ants reach the top. Because they are really fast and really aggressive. And uh, you want to make sure you're ready for them. And it makes actually the game a lot more fun. Oh boy, oh boy. That was a cool, cool episode. With all these visuals, it's really going to look like an actual tower defense game. And I absolutely adore that. Wow. Oh man, I'm so excited. In the next episode, first off, we're going to change the enemy speeds a little bit lower. Because right now, they are really fast. We're also going to add animations to the enemies. So they look even more and more alive. And in the next episode, we're going to do the very, very first basics for tower damage. So we can actually kill all these enemies i am super excited if you guys like this death vlog and want to see the next one please leave a like and subscribe and i will see you in the next death vlog see ya mm -hmm.